Jack Letowski's Q action is one of the very best we see in the modern game, which gives him incredibly accurate long potting that's consistent combined with excellent Q power. Although Jack appears to push the Q through perfectly straight, he does it like no other player. His Q action is unique, so how exactly does it work? When you look at Jack's technique in detail, you start to notice that he's doing a lot of things differently. However, he's still one of the best and most consistent long potters we have in snooker right now, as well as being able to produce more action on the cue ball than most of the other players at the top of the game. But despite this, he doesn't go about things technically in the same way as other top players. But Jack seems to have found a smooth way to deliver the cue that's incredibly accurate when he gets it right. It's just a bit different. And nowhere is this more noticeable than with Jack's grip. It's rare to find two different players who grip the cue in exactly the same way, but how you hold on to it makes a big difference in the success of a shot. This is one of the most vital parts of any player's technique. You see, I find it makes the game a lot easier to play if you keep all of your fingertips in contact with the cue all the way through the shot, but Jack doesn't do this. In fact, when Jack plays a shot, on the end of his backswing, he takes all of his fingertips off the cue and then reapplies them as he plays the shot. This is very unusual, especially when you compare it to someone like Sean Murphy here, who clearly keeps all of his fingers on the cue at every point during the shot. Even though it's common to open up your grip on your backswing, Jack is almost releasing it altogether, and the only way he's holding on to the cue is by squeezing it between his thumb and forefinger. Although this seems a little unusual, it does give him full control of the cue at the front, and all of his fingers working together in this way allow him to generate quite a bit of cue speed without really having to play the shot with any power. And this appears to work for him brilliantly as he seems to be able to generate a lot of action with very little effort. So in a way he lets go of the cue on the way back and then grabs it again on the way through. But how does he do this smoothly? Well, to start off with, Jack always pulls his cue all the way back, and he does this at a slow speed. And after he's brought his cue arm all the way back, there's a slight pause. Jack then begins to push the cue through, but before he does this, he just slightly raises his elbow. You can see it if you watch very carefully that he just pushes his elbow up into the air before pushing it forwards. The reason for this is there's always a bit of a wobble when you stop bringing the cue back and start pushing it through. And by raising his elbow up just a tiny bit, Jack seems to have found a way of accelerating his cue a little bit more smoothly. This means his arm starts moving before his cue does, and so long as he gets it right, it means he should be able to play the same shots with less effort, which might explain how he's so easily able to float in long pots. The only problem with this is his whole body raising up as he's pushing the cue through may cause him to be slightly inconsistent at the top level, but in theory it shouldn't make too much difference. There is a bit of body movement when he does this, but you'd have to say with the long balls he pots under pressure this can't affect him too much. And there's still other things he does differently. But before we do that we're just going to find Glider from Dover, Delaware, which is there. So we've now seen what happens before Jack strikes the cue ball, and in particular how he's able to strike it so smoothly, but what happens next? After he struck the cue ball, he then pushes his cue arm all the way through into his body, and after it struck his body, it actually then drops down a little bit. This is actually quite clever because before the hand on his cue can impact his body, he dips it down underneath. Because if your hand does come into contact with your body like this, you may find it gets knocked out wide slightly, and this can throw your cue arm offline. But while he's doing that, he keeps his head on the cue. And again, this is slightly different to some other professionals. When players we've already looked at, such as Sean Murphy or Ronnie O'Sullivan, play a shot, they usually dip their cue away from their body like that. Jack, however, doesn't do this. He actually keeps his chin on his cue all the way through the shot, like that. I think I got that right anyway. 
If you watch Sean very carefully here, you can see after he plays the shot, he dips the cue away from his head. Compare that with Jack, where he keeps his head on the cue more or less all the way through the shot. But he doesn't do this on every shot. But we only ever see this from Jack when he's playing a shot with a larger amount of power. On shots like these where Jack has to play with a little bit more power, he clearly dips the cue away from his head. It's fascinating to see the difference in between the more powerful shots and the regular shots where he doesn't do this. And it contrasts heavily with someone like Ronnie O'Sullivan who uses the same technique on almost every single shot he plays. Now his stance is fairly normal except he bends his knee into the shot quite a bit, meaning he's always leaning into it which is probably quite good for generating cue power while staying almost completely in control of the shot. Having all that weight going forward onto this knee means that if anything goes wrong with the shot Jack's playing, he's unlikely to move sideways and his weight's just likely to transfer forwards towards the shot. And now that World Snooker keeps the records of players' average shot time, we can see that Jack's clearly one of the fastest players on tour. But the interesting thing about this, at no stage does he ever look rushed. Even to look at him, he doesn't really come across as a fast player. But before we look at his slightly unusual bridge, let's find me drums from Hamburg, Germany. Which is there. Because you guessed it, his bridge hand seems to be fairly unique as well. You see, the majority of snooker players have their bridge hand in that sort of a position, forcing their fingers into the table so the ends of their fingers come up. For some reason, Jack bends his fingers a little bit like this as he plays the shot, and he seems to keep his bridge perfectly still, so there can't be anything wrong with it. In fact, watching Jack, I was impressed by how rock solid his bridge hand appeared to be and didn't seem to move on any shot. It's just I haven't noticed many other professionals regularly use anything other than a standard bridge, other than possibly Rianne Evans, who has a similar bridge to Jack. Jack's also very confident with both hands and seems to be able to play with an identical technique on both sides of his body, which is something we don't even see from Ronnie. Even though Ronnie's exceptionally good with both hands, when he plays shots left-handed, he actually tucks his cue arm into his body just a little bit, which he never does with his right hand. Whereas Jack looks identical, but this isn't everything, because he probably isn't as consistent as Ronnie like this. So in general, Jack's technique's designed to give him a lot of cue power with very little effort. Raising his elbow before he pushes the cue through does cause a little bit of body movement and this might be the reason he's a little bit inconsistent at times. But so long as it gets it right, it means his cue action's going to be silky smooth. He does this by always having a long smooth backswing where he opens up his grip completely before gripping his cue again as he pushes it through. And before he pushes his cue through, he raises up his elbow a little bit to avoid a jerky motion at the start of his swing. Which explains how he's able to play these exhibition shots. But that's not it, because he's able to keep control by keeping his head on the cue all the way through the shot, and by leaning into the table to such an extent that he's transferring all his weight forwards and it's unlikely he's going to wobble off line. And allows him to play shots really accurately like this. This just goes to show that every single player plays the game in a different way, and although not all of these approaches are going to work for everybody, you can always find something different if you look hard enough. I like making these types of video because it feels like every time I look in depth at a professional player's technique, I learn something new. With Jack, something I definitely will take away is the advantages of slowly squeezing the cue more and more as you play the shot, which was something I didn't really do before, but I quite like. Something I'm probably going to leave well alone though is the way he accelerates the cue forward smoothly using his elbow, as I didn't feel this would work with my technique, although it seems to work brilliantly for Jack. But it does drive home the importance of a smooth delivery, and although that might not be exactly the way I do it, it is something I do want to work on in the future.
If you want to find out more about how professional snooker players' techniques can help your own game, then have a look at these two videos of Ronnie O'Sullivan and Sean Murphy. And remember, don't just watch, play, and make the commitment to becoming a better player by subscribing to the channel and visit the website. See you later.